Well, hello everybody. I am Bo Batten. I'm at Scorpion's World Headquarters in Cloverdale, Indiana. And today we are kicking off and launching a new video segment. And we are sitting down with Clayton Tomasino, owner and CEO of Scorpion, for our very first installment. Stay tuned for later episodes as we are going to sit down with Josh Bias, our local chamber director, and many other resources that Scorpion has to offer. Clayton, in your role at Scorpion as the owner and CEO, uh, father of three, I'm curious about a typical day for you. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, a typical day. I would like to say that I get up uh, super early and work out, but uh, kind of off that track right now. Uh, but let's see. I wake up my son. He goes to middle school in Plainfield. Uh, so I wake him up, what, 6.30-ish. Get him ready to go, and then I take him uh, typically, and then yeah, then we then we get the other two kids to school, and then come to work, uh, and then yeah, work's always busy for the most part, um, and then yeah, uh, after work, I mean, I'm typically every pretty much every evening coaching a sport, uh, so I don't know my. Remember when we had kids, we're like, oh, let's go do one thing at a time. Well, now all the kids are like in two things. Um, you know, so I think we just look at, at Monday, my oldest son has baseball and then my daughter has basketball Tuesday. Uh, my oldest son has, he has baseball every day, so I won't keep repeating that. Then my uh, youngest son has soccer, you know, Wednesday, uh, you know, basketball and so on and so forth. And then the weekends are tournaments, uh, right now for softball and baseball. Uh, so yeah, yeah, it's just busy, and I and I and I try to help coach as much as I can, yeah. and you try to spend like especially with three kids and and a wife as well, you spot, try to spend time with everybody equally, and then yeah, here sometimes yeah. coming to work for you is uh, relaxation. Well, especially after weekends like this coming weekend, yeah, you know, uh, both my son and my daughter have tournaments the same weekend, so yeah, you're just running back and forth pretty much. All the way until the end of the day Sunday, yeah, you feel yeah more tired when you get here, but I it's, but it's the life, yes. you know. It will be over before you know it. I know, yes. I know you're in the middle. I'm in the middle of it now, so it seems yeah. very hurried and harried all the time. But um, yeah, yeah, it, it will be. Yeah, you've been steering the ship of uh, Scorpion for several years now. What's the biggest changes you've seen? Oh gosh. Um, you know, I mean, I came in in, let's see, 07. It's kind of, you know, the, the big launch, uh, the secondary launch on Scorpion. So, I mean, really the biggest thing is, you know, in terms of, you know, where we're at right now, how much film has grown. If you were to tell me, because we, were, we weren't even in window film or anything like that uh, back in 2007 when I came in to uh, help my uncle and father. We were, I wasn't even part of it. We were just doing uh, truck bed liners, selling nine gallon kits, nine gallon kits, which we don't even sell anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, so yeah, I mean, everything has changed. Uh, the whole, yeah, the dynamic of it. Now the ethos of the business hasn't changed. Uh, but, but yeah, what we do and yeah, the size and all that stuff has definitely changed a lot. So window film has become a major part of Scorpion. Does that feed the ego at all? Uh, no, no, um, a success. Oh, I don't know. No, uh, it doesn't. I mean, it's, it's great. Um, and I think it's really a testament to, uh, I mean, it's a testament to people thinking and working. Um, you know, we, we have a good product. And once again, I kind of go back to the ethos. I think the ethos of the company is correct and the culture of the company is correct. Um, so I would say I'm more proud of that than probably anything. Yeah. Um, you know, because I think we are a very, uh, you know, we're almost Silicon Valley ish, like uh, in in the way we work, because it is very creative. Very, uh, we're always trying to do something more, something better. Uh, we always stick down to because the company was launched on you know what I call the democratization of opportunity. It's you know uh, giving really kind of high quality, high value uh, stuff to other businesses and then really getting them into the business 
almost making money or kind of risk free from day one, then letting the, each and every business scale out, uh, you know, as they can from there. You know, and I think we've, we're working on refining that craft yeah. as a company because I think we really do believe that. You know, and it really is something that we've always, it's always how we've always positioned ourselves. All the products we've developed have always been right there. Um, you know, so yeah, I'm really, and I think we're still pushing there, you know. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of just really proud of that and the work that's been done there. How important is supporting our dealers to you? I, I mean, it's, it, it's, uh, it's important. I mean, there's, uh, you know, the, there's two sides of the coin, you know, uh, I mean, it's, it's sort of a hunter gatherer sort of thing. Right. I mean, that goes back to the beginning of time. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's always fun to go hunt, but it's, uh, you know, it's risky. You may come back with nothing. Yeah. Uh, in the meantime, you know, if, you know, you're not cultivating at home and growing, then all the hunting's for not, uh, you know, so, once, once we have customers, I mean, yeah, we, we want them to be lifetime customers. We want them to be part of, I guess, for a lack of a better phrase, part of the family or part of the, yeah. the community of it. And we want everybody, yeah, I mean, everybody we touch to be more successful. You know, the question is always how. How can we help them? Yeah. Um, you know, and, you know, what tools can we give people? You know, how, how, how what, do they, what are they looking for? All that kind of stuff. It's always, yeah, part of the process, part of the part of the work. This is the note taking section for you all. If you have ideas on this, you feel free to reach out to me, Bo at scorpioncodings.com. We can, uh, we can listen. We're going to be happy to listen to what you have to say. Uh, another question for Clayton here. Would you describe yourself as an aggressive businessman? Uh, no, no. Um, you know, I think, I mean, we're aggressive with, once again, we're aggressive with our thoughts, aggressive with the creativity aspect of it. But then I think we, you know, I guess we throw a lot of mud against the wall. Um, but I mean, I think we're always looking at it, analyzing, you know, cause you know, you can't, uh, I mean, we're, I mean, we're a bigger business, but we're still a small business in terms of, you know, those classifications. Um, and, you know, so we can't sit there and every, every idea is the best idea and spend all the money in the world on it. There's a lot of risk assessment, looking at it and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if I'm getting lost in the question. But, yeah. uh, no, I think you got it. Um, I think it's a good segue to the next question is you've navigated, um, boat as I referenced earlier, sorry for that. Uh, you've been the leader of this company through a recession, through a pandemic. Um, can you talk about navigating through those waters? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, when we, when I came in, it was, uh, I guess a little backstory. Uh, my wife and I were, we were living elsewhere, actually working in Hawaii. And then, um, Scorpion was, Scorpion was, has been up and running at that point in time from 96 to 2006, but it was very much kind of a sideline business. Um, uh, well, they're having to wind down, uh, my, Dad, my uncle's primary business was an asbestos removal. That's kind of, that was what we did growing up. Uh, you know, so everybody wants to live a glamorous lifestyle. Um, you know, but they're winding that down then. So, uh, they're really one of the large short being as, you know, like primary business. What's yeah. the business? You know, so that's when I came back in like 2006, 2007. Um, yeah. What was the question? No, I was kind of. Navigating through a pandemic oh, yeah. and recession. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, you got to be flexible. Um, yeah, you can't be too rigid on stuff. But yeah, so in 2007, I mean, then, of course, you know, we started growing pretty well. But 2008, uh, 2009 is kind of when that first recession kind of hit us. You know, I know it was kind of 08, 08, 09. Uh, but we're still growing 08. 09 has been, was our only negative year for a really long run um, at that point in time. Even... I think then we were down 7%, which did great against the market. Um, you know, so we came out of that and was, you know, you know, grew, grew, grew. Um, out of that, I will say, you know, uh, you know, and there's like awards around and stuff like that. You know, what's interesting is looking at growth cycles and stuff like that, because, uh, you know, you can outgrow 
you know, you you learn a lot doing that kind of stuff. So, you know, because I remember there was there were points where we were kind of growing like thirty percent ish, and at that and you realize that that was almost growing too fast because you're outgrowing. Once again, we we're kind of a a bootstrap business ourselves. So I mean, you're outgrowing your own cash and how much how fast you can turn it and inventory and acquiring new customers. And so you almost grow yourself broke, and then you slow down. Um, you know, thirty percent one year is pretty sizable. Yeah, yeah, we had that, but you know, I think that for us, our optimal kind of maximum growth um, is right in that thirteen to seventeen percent. Um, now, I think we're starting to redefine uh, growth in terms of like revenue or profit and things of that nature. Um, you know, but yeah, I guess going back to the question, you know, you, you just navigate through it. You never. I guess you can't stop putting ideas out there. You know, once again, I hate going back to the kind of creative and all yeah. that kind of stuff, but you know, because I don't know, it's when you sit there and you lick your wounds and you do stuff like that. I mean, you just can't stop coming up with ideas. I remember in the first recession, uh, like we had at, at that point in time, there was we had a, a lot of you know, for us, it was there was a lot of accounts, a lot of like manufacturing, and everybody had terms and you know, so even though you had like current assets, like you had all that AR, nobody was paying you customers yeah. return and stuff. Um, you know, but then you, you know, you take that and it's like, okay, yeah, you can panic and you know, you do a little bit because especially in your first time going through something like that. And that was, that was definitely mine. I mean, it was, you know, jump right in and then that hits. Um, yeah, but you know, you panic for a second and that's fine. You know, it's human nature. But then you really have to sit down and you have to figure out, okay, A, how do you get through the short term? And then, then you look medium and long term. Um, you know, but I mean, I think that we're always uh, trying to put out ideas. Like even, you know, I think when we looked at last year, you know, and this is just a very uh, recent thing, but, you know, last year we have a truck manufacturing shortage. You know, so for us, it's like, okay, well, what can we do? If there's going to be less trucks available, you know, what can we do uh, with our materials and that kind of stuff? And then, you know, we have some great customers that are using kind of our, our staple bed liner material and they're using it for a uh, smooth exterior finish. And that's great. And, you know, so we looked at that and it's like, okay, can we do that and do that with a matte finish? What's the delivery systems? Yeah. Uh, you know, we have Kevlar is kind of getting back back into it. We're looking at exterior coatings and off road. So I mean, you keep thinking about it, thinking about it, and thinking about it. Um, well, it comes back to your one of your favorite words, creativity. Yeah, I mean, ultimately that's what it is. It's looking at different different uses, different ways, um, but it all comes under one word: protection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you do have to be focused in on. Yeah, because we're an exterior, kind of exterior protective products company, even though, even window film kind of goes on the interior of the window, but yeah, same difference. Um, you know, so yeah, because you don't want to go down a rabbit, rabbit hole, a rabbit trail, I don't know, of, of different ideas. Because like, just because we're in the automotive sector, automotive vertical, or we're in the uh, industrial, commercial vertical, you know, you don't need to just meander into other areas into that market. I mean, stick with what you know. Um, you know, stick with what you're good at. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I think uh, one thing for me, interesting, I've been here almost 10 years. Um, and to this day, I, I've done lots of jobs here. I've been in sales. I've been kind of R&D, you know, training. But I think to me, the most interesting aspect of what I did when I was in sales was it's not just truck bed liners. And how proud of you are that? We've been in the military applications, trailers, um, EMS, fire trucks. Uh, I mean, some of the best fire truck and ambulance manufacturers in the world use our products, use our XO2 product. Yeah. And that, that to me is just, it's, it's a feather in the cap for sure. It is. I mean, I think, uh, you know, probably the, you know, one of the coolest contracts we've ever had, uh, they were already running when I got here. And that was... Uh, I don't even know. You probably know better than I was, but I mean, back in two thousand six. But uh, the military operations, like I said, I was, I was in the Middle East, and Afghanistan, and, uh, Iraq, and places like that. Would that would that be all right? Would that been two thousand six ish? Yeah. But 
You know, so they were making all these Black Hawk helicopters, and in the Black Hawk helicopters, they put Kevlar mats. And then we made a specialty coating, excuse me, that went around the Kevlar mats. That was a fire retardant. So as soon as I go, like, say, Black Hawk helicopter is going, a missile hits it from underneath, hits it, the Kevlar mat keeps it from, you know, just blowing the whole thing up. And then we had a coating on there. So, like, say, it, it, of course, it hits, spark, fire. As soon as it hit the coating, it would extinguish the fire, um, you know, and that was, I mean, that was a really cool part. Then they already had that going uh, when I got here, and that yeah. ran for years, yeah. you know, and we've done uh, several cool applications like that. Now, I'm not, not going to lie, I mean, with those, we've also swung and missed yeah. uh, several times as well, and we continue to swing and miss to, to this day, um, you know, but yeah, I mean, we've had a lot of... Uh, you know, really good partners in a lot of really good industries. You know, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, the trailer industry has served us well, and the EMS and specialty yeah. uh, vehicle industries have served us well. We've had uh, success in different parts of the RV market um, on the manufacturing side. So, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of really cool, yeah. interesting yeah. things. Yeah, I think, it, yeah, because we had talked about it years ago, but. You know, I think the original concept, of course, you want to be a solutions provider. Um, you know, now we try to take that kind of concept over to, yeah, you know, how can we help people mm -hmm. grow and attain their goals and stuff like that and provide those kind of solutions. Uh, well, still, I mean, we're still out there on the coding side and, you know, always looking for those cool applications. Yeah. yeah. And all this being said, we, we work with some of the finest manufacturers in the world, but ultimately our base is the mom and pop brick and mortar shops yeah. that um, really helped us get started uh, 25, 26 years ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, I think because when we look at our average cut, I mean, a lot of this is just kind of assumed data. But I mean, I think that we look at it as like kind of 3.5 uh, employees per business that we work with. So, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's really cool to... Uh, partner with businesses like that because I mean you want to be more in the product you want to mean more to them and I mean if you're you know if you're a small business I mean you need to really depend on what you get in when you call when you yeah. call in you don't want a robo call you want to talk to a person um, all that kind of stuff and I think that's yeah I mean it's still part of you know the way that we think about things yeah. because I mean we're a small business here I mean it's and if, you, if you don't believe Clayton, just try calling in here a couple of times. You're just as likely to get me or Clayton answering the phone as you are a receptionist. Yeah. Well, if it's getting close to that third ring, I'll pick it up. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I'll pick it up earlier. We all do. If, if I feel like I need to. Need to. Um, or I'm avoiding something. Avoiding? <laughs> we do have color right here. <laughs> um, what is a, uh, what's your top piece of advice you'd give to somebody getting started as an entrepreneur? You know, I think that, I mean, you always have an idea of, of what, of what it is that you want to do. So whether you're, you know, you're selling, you want to open a health food store or you're wanting to, you know, tint windows or this, that, and the other. So you always come in with that base idea, you know, and once again, I, I seems to be a, a phrase of reference for me today, but, um, Come up with that base idea, but really, as soon as as soon as you get going, as soon as you decide, like, okay, I am doing this, you have to be open to everything that you hear or read about your business product, that kind of stuff. So because you you have to be able to, you know, take your original concept and let it change. Um, you know, I think that you know that and. And of course, there's some great ideas or great products or something like that, that, you know, if you just stick with it and don't change and it'll be the next great thing. And that very well could be true. Uh, but it's tough to make a living uh, when you have to, uh, yeah, sit there and convince people that what you're saying is right. So, I mean, and whether that be even your marketing message, um, or there's a lot, a lot of different ways to do that, but just being really flexible on on the concept or what it is or how that you sell it or how you deliver it, um, especially in the beginning, you know, being responsive to the customer and setting the whole thing up as uh, kind of 
necessarily customer responsiveness versus yeah. you pushing an agenda or something. Right. Okay. If you could go back and talk to your 18 year old self, what advice would you give that young man? Oh gosh. I mean, I would give him the same advice my parents gave me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just get all your stuff done and really focus and lock in and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Focus is a good one. It, it, it's a good one. Focus is hard and it's getting harder. There's so many things pulling us in different directions. And I, I, I think that one's a very interesting one. Yeah. You know, one of the things that, I don't know, I don't know. But yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I was, yeah, I was 18, so who knows if I would have listened or yeah. like, who's this dude? You know, <laughs> um, yeah, but you yeah, have focus and, you know, confidence. Um, yeah, those are probably the two things I would hit. Okay. Yeah. Well, aside from the obvious, hiring me, what is the best business decision you've ever made, in your opinion? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, so you look at, I don't know, I, you know, every, every year you just, you just improve a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, uh, but um, I mean, of course, I mean, looking back on it, I mean, the whole uh, window film and how that came to be, I mean, that's, that, I mean, that, that has been really successful sure. for us. So, uh, you know, window film, we originally looked at, so we sold, you know, truck bed liner, truck bed liner startup, truck bed liner kits. And then, um, yeah, so then it was like, okay, well, we're, we were add on for these businesses. So, the window film actually came, we were partnered with another company um, on all these different products. It was called Scan, it was a Scorpion Automotive Network. And it had this cool little logo thing. Yeah, I think I love the logo. That was really the whole thing. But it was adding, uh, doing other add-ons. So there was, uh, oh, uh, like headlight repair was one of them. And I think paintless dent repair, window film, and oh, uh, it might have been just like crack repair or something. I don't remember. Um, regardless, I mean, when we looked at it, uh, you know, so so we had that. We were running that. We were trying to run that whole concept for a year or so. Um, I mean, eventually you realize that, okay, uh, most of it had to drop off. And then, like, window film was actually kind of the profitable category. Yeah. Um, you know, and then... And then, so then we kind of started slowly on that because then you have to actually learn what the heck it is that you're talking about and uh, what you're doing and what the customers are looking for, uh, you know, and you got to find, you know, so it took us, it took us probably a couple of years to even find, find our footing and find where we fit in the market and all that kind of stuff. But then, you know, then after over time, it's just like one, you know, one pebble in the can after another, after another, after another. You know, you, you buy you buy some stuff and this, that, and the other, and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, it's extraordinarily robust. So I mean, that that the growth of that within the company um, is good. So it, now it's almost a company within itself, and coatings and company within itself. Yeah. You know, and then and then we look at it. And it's just like, okay, how do, where where is the next company within itself? Yeah. So. Okay. All right, we're gonna change gears here a little bit. What is your go-to karaoke song? Oh, um, Chantilly Lace by the Big Bopper. Wow. Any chance you want to offer a rendition? Oh, man. No. I mean, yeah. We can cut back in. You can edit. Okay. Like a thing where, you know, we'll have like the 80s kind of light, laser yeah, light show yeah, thing behind me. I'll, uh, I'll work on some audio effects on that. Or you can just have it as the opening and ending. <laughs> uh, favorite food? Favorite, oh, nachos. Nachos. Yeah. My, like, yeah, yeah, nachos. In general, nachos. Um, yeah, but some cool things. I, I don't know. I like nachos of all kinds. I mean, I'm not a big fruity nacho guy. Like, you know, if somebody, you go somewhere, it's got a pineapple in it or something. Okay. I'll eat it. Don't get me wrong. And I'm not that picky when it comes to food. But, uh, yeah, like... Like just like when you go out, like you're getting Mexican and getting like the nachos with all the meat or sometimes you get like bar you go to a place and they have like barbecue or spicy nachos. Those are good. Yeah. Nachos. Nachos are where it's at. Okay. Uh, hobby. What is your favorite hobby? Um, I mean, right now it's, 
<laughs> taking my children to their hobbies. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, you re, I read stuff, but yeah, I really don't have them. I really don't have You, you don't much. have time. Um, nor, and nor do I, I grieve for that either. Because this is, you know, uh, you know, like I said, I coach a lot. So, I mean, it's, I mean, it's fun. You're out there. It's almost, it is exercising. It's working with kids. Yeah. And it's bonding with your kid. Um, you know, so that's a worthwhile hobby in and of itself. It means a lot when, uh, when your kids see you interacting with them and they don't look up in the stands and see you with your nose in the cell phone. Oh, and sure. I always take a lot of pride in that with my kids. Um, you know, and, and they've, they've said that, you know, yeah. right? my dad's helping my, uh, my parents are helping me out. They're not, you're paying attention. Yeah. And clearly you do the same with yours. Well, and yeah. Yeah. And I know everybody, if you, if you have a kid and you get a chance to coach, uh, a definitely do it. Even if you don't know the sport, um, you know, because it is, it is fun. You'll figure it out. And it, it does become a time hassle. I think keep touching the microphone. So, okay, but, uh, keep, it, it, but I mean, it's definitely worth it. And the secondary thing, like I have to coach my, I had to, I, I say I had to, I feel like I did, but, um, our youngest son, like he wanted to play soccer this year. Um, you know, but then they had nobody that would, yeah. that would coach. Um, and the same happened, like my daughter, uh, She's not gonna have any time to, but she wanted to play flag football, and some of the signups came out for those uh, for this uh, session. It's like they had no coach, and they had like half the teams. And we had the same thing in baseball, you know. So they're definitely needed out there. So I mean, uh, any influence for the most part is a good influence. It's probably a horrible phrase because that's totally not true. But uh, yeah, I mean, get out there and, and coach and help, or at least coordinate, do all that kind of stuff because it is fun. But I mean, I know everybody's busy. I get it. I really do. Uh, All right. As we start wrapping up here, uh, the old standard go-to question, goals for the next couple of years. Um, Anything on the horizon you want to talk about? Oh, gosh. Um, you know, we have, I mean, we have a lot. You know, I think that, yeah, I mean, this is part of it. Uh, you know, I, you know, I guess, I'll, let me talk about, if you don't mind, I'll talk about the orientation of the business and how sure. uh, we kind of set it up and stuff like that. Um, you know, internally, uh, the business is run, uh, we use a thing, it's the framework that's called the great game of business, but internally, I mean, everybody, we run off of pretty much a running P&L at all times. So we'll have weekly meetings and do stuff uh, based on that. Uh, so kind of breaking back out from that, you know, one of the things that I worked on was I'm trying this year is kind of really develop help working with everybody on what their vision is for the next year. Because I mean, a business, a workplace, just a collective of people spending time together mm -hmm. for a common cause. Um, you know, so I mean, we we look at uh, look at yours. It's kind of like let's put together a podcast series and that kind yeah. of stuff. And then, um, you know, I think. I mean, uh, like Josh has a, a deal that he's working on that, that he wants to see the maturity and, you know, we're working on flat glass, um, and really developing out because that's a wide open opportunity and we've never been able to do extraordinarily well, but I think that, um, yeah, we're putting a lot of good ideas and good thoughts. Somebody's manning that project, um, you know, kind of looking at our PPF program, um, and kind of you know, rebuilding that and re-establishing re that. We have epoxy, yeah. um, you know, and then I am looking at, uh, we have different kind of accounting and uh, banking, and all those systems, tying that together, because eventually, I mean, we're gonna probably look at kind of expanding out um, over five years or so. Um, you know, because one of the things that we wanna do is offer more training. Um, yeah. So for the last question I have for Clay today, what is one question you wish I had asked you that I didn't? Oh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. That's, that's a tough one. Uh, kind of pretty open book. So yeah. whatever, whatever you want to, whatever you want to ask on it. You know, I guess really, you know, my only other thoughts is also like wings. 
Yeah. So nachos and wings, but not necessarily together. You know, one one or the other. Uh, but no, no, no. <laughs> okay. Josh Bias is an employee here at Sporkin, and he is a wing connoisseur. Yes. He, let's just say he's a ten when it comes to wings. Where would you rank yourself on wings? Oh, in terms of like connoisseurship. Yes. Is that a word? Connoisseurship. Yes. Um, we're making it one. Um, oh, I would rank myself as a one. A one. In terms of being a connoisseur, because okay. once again, I mean, I'm the, I'm the youngest uh, child of like a farm. I mean, we were a farm family growing up, so you know whatever was available. I mean, the best thing that happened is while I was growing up, and to age myself, forty three. So while I was growing up, that's when the big there was a big thing about how, you know. If you ate chicken, you could eat white meat and it was good for you. And then if you ate dark meat, it was bad for you. And so there was a, there was a whole thing on that. And I think it's probably still true today. I don't know. I don't even know if it's true or not. But so my dad, uh, he had health stuff growing up. So then it was all about, you know, you know, when the chicken came home, everybody was all about the white meat. So everybody's fighting for the breast, this, that, and the other. So what that opens up is this whole platform of dark meat options, to which I am perfectly fine with. Uh, so in that regards, yeah, uh, I would not rank myself as a really a connoisseur of anything uh, in terms of food. That is, but let me get this but, right. But but, but I, there are some things that are good, like for wings. I, yeah, I mean I like spicy, but I'm also wise enough to know, and I've eaten enough wings. Uh, you know, that, you know, you don't go to the top of the ladder. Yeah. Are, are you saying that chicken wings might have had something to do with your survival as the youngest of a farm family? Um, I mean, there is there is something to it. Oh, gosh, <laughs> now we're getting deep. You know, uh, we're connecting uh, myself to my inner child. It could be. It could be. I really could have, could have uh, unearthed something here. Yeah, all right. I'm going to go weep in my room. All right, so we're going to wrap up our first installment uh, with the messages of chicken wings. For survival. Um, hey, I want to thank Clay for taking the time, one, to give me the freedoms to be creative um, and pursue things like this, uh, two, for sitting down and taking some time away from his schedule, um, and uh, keep back, keep checking back for more episodes, and remember, Scorpion, protect what's yours.